Okay, so first thing, drum machine designer, it's not an instrument. I'm going to call it an instrument all through this, but it's actually a very clever overlay that sits on top of an ultra beat. So all the sounds that you hear, they're coming from an ultra beat in the background. Okay, now it behaves like an instrument, so it can live on an instrument track like how I've got it now. Also, it's the default instrument for electronic drummer tracks. Right? So it can live on a drummer track or an instrument track. Now, as I said, it's an overlay that sits on top of an ultra beat, and it sits on top of an ultra beat drum machine stack, very similar to the regular ultra beat drum machine stacks in the library. Okay, now look, we have to understand how the ultra beat drum machine stack works in the background and how the routing works and how it connects to this panel. If we don't understand that, we're going to be completely lost when we get into the really deep stuff further on. So check it out, right? Um, here's the instrument track with drum machine designer on it. And now I'm going to load up a regular ultra beat drum machine from the library, the Boutique 909. Boom. Okay, now we've got um, a regular ultra beat drum machine on the track. And all these ultra beat drum machines in the library, they're all track stacks. Okay, you can open the stack from the track here, and you can also open the stack on the channel for the track here in the mixer with a little white triangle. Boom, like that. And when you open up a regular ultra beat drum machine stack, the very first channel inside the stack is always the ultra beat main channel, output one, two, with the ultra beat instrument at the top. You can open the ultra beat from there. There's the ultra beat in the drum machine stack. Right. And then that main channel output one two is followed by any additional ultra beat outputs. All right. So here's all the ultra beat outputs inside the drum machine stack. Okay, and all these ultra beat outputs are routed to the final stereo channel here. The whole kit arrives here in stereo. And this final stereo channel is the channel for the drum machine track. And it's also the stack master, you can open it and close it like that. Now that's a regular ultra beat drum machine. Drum machine designer is the same. It's a drum machine stack the same, but it's more advanced. Let's check it out. So I load a drum machine designer back onto this instrument track. Boom. Okay, now we've got the after party on here, drum machine designer. Now what I'm going to show you now is the same whether this is an instrument track with drum machine designer on or a drummer track with drum machine designer on, right? It's a ultra beat drum machine stack but you can't open the stack from the track. But you can open the stack from the channel here for the track in the mixer with the little white triangle, right? Let's open it up. Okay, so we're gonna open up this ultra beat drum machine stack inside this drum machine designer main channel. Here we go, one, two, three, boom. And Lord have mercy, look at that. There is your ultra beat drum machine stack inside the drum machine designer main channel. Okay, and just like with a regular ultra beat drum machine, inside the stack, when you open it, the very first channel inside the stack is the ultra beat main channel output one two with the ultra beat instrument at the top there. All right, there's the ultra beat powering our drum machine designer stack in the background, and then this first channel. Ultra beat output one two is followed by all the additional ultra beat separate outs. Ultra beat out three four, five six, seven eight, etc., all the way down to the final ultra beat output forty seven forty eight. There's all your ultra beat outputs. Okay, they're all stereo outputs, and they've all got effects and EQ on. And then all these ultra beat separate outs, they are all submixed down to these six submixes which live in the stack after the ultra beat separate outs okay so all the ultra beat kick outputs arrive at this kick submix all the ultra beat snare and clap outputs arrive at this snare and clap submix all the ultra beat hi hat outputs arrive at this hi hat submix all the ultra beat tom outputs arrive at this tom submix all the ultra beat percussion and shaker outputs arrive at this percussion and shaker submix and all the ultra beat symbol and effects outputs arrive at this symbols and effects submix, right? And then these six submixes, plus an internal delay and an internal reverb that live in the stack after the submixes, right? The whole smash is then routed to the final stereo channel, just like a regular ultra beat drum machine. 
The whole kit arrives here in stereo. Right, and this final stereo channel is the channel for the drum machine designer track, whether it's an instrument track or a drummer track. And this is the track stack master channel. Okay, now just in case you don't know, if you're new to Logic, when you've got the drum machine designer track selected, whether it's an instrument track or a drummer track, its channel here is highlighted in the mixer automatically. Okay, so this is the final stereo channel for drum machine designer, but we get a copy of that channel in the inspector column here. So this is the final channel for drum machine designer, and so is this one in the inspector column. It's just a copy of the one in the mixer. So we don't need the mixer to be open. We've always got the final channel here when we select the track. All right, let's open the library again. So here's the final drum machine designer channel. The whole kit arrives here in stereo. Okay, and the final channel has got effects and EQ on it, and at the top is the drum machine designer slot. We open it from there. All right. So that's how the UltraBeat stack works in the background, how all the routing works. All right. And we're going to severely mess with that when we get into making custom kits. Now here's your drum machine designer panel. It's got two views. This is the default, what we call stereo kit view. Select a pad and you're in pad view. To get back to the default view, you click on the icon and title bar at the top. Boom, like that. Okay, now at the top the pads live there. There's two pages of them. Okay, and each one of these pads is connected to an ultrabeat voice and its separate output in the stack. Now on the second page, you'll, you'll always see empty pads. These are just unused. They're not connected to the ultrabeat, right? Now the pads flash when they're triggered. You can solo pads, one or more can be soloed. All right, and you can mute pads, one or more can be muted. Etc. like that, right? And um, these pads, they can be dragged and moved around in any order you want. You can even drag pa pads from one page to another. It's a bit tricky to do that. Um, because when you do drag a pad from the second to the first page, of course, one of the page pads on this page hops over to the other page, and it may not be the one you want. So it can be terribly fiddly to do that, but you can do it. All right. And um, you can change the size of the drum machine designer by dragging it. Also, you'll notice each pad has got a, a MIDI note number on it at the bottom, right? Okay, so that's the pads at the top, and um, when you're in this default stereo kit view, the bottom hideable area has two pages of controls. Okay, one page called controls and one page called sends. So these are smart controls, and these are just a copy of the smart controls for the track. <laughs> Here's the smart controls for the track. Controls, controls, sends, sends. So when Drum Machine Designer is in its default view, you just basically get the smart controls for the track bunged on the bottom there. So you haven't got to bother opening them down below. Okay, now these two pages of smart controls connect to things in the UltraBeat stack. Let's open the stack up again. Well, there we go. Now inside the stack, there's your UltraBeat main channel followed by all the other separate outs. And they're all submixed down to the six submixes. Right now, the way the smart controls work is this. The mix controls, each of these controls the fader on each of the six submixes. So that's the kick submix, snare and clap submix, hi hat submix, tom submix, percussion and shaker submix, cymbals and effects submix. Right? If you turn off a mix, it simply mutes that submix channel in the stack. Now on the sends page we've got group delay group reverb each of the six submixes has two auxiliary sends the first auxiliary send sends to this internal delay All right. the second auxiliary send on each submix sends to this internal reverb so the group delay controls here they turn up auxiliary send one on the kick submix snare and clap submix hat submix Tom submix, percussion and shake submix, symbols and effects submix, right? And that sends out some of that submix to the internal delay to add delay to your kick submix, or your hat submix, or your tom submix, or whatever you want, right? And the group reverb controls turn up the second auxiliary send on the kick submix, snare and clap submix, hi hat submix, 
Tom submix, percussion and shaker submix, and cymbals and effects submix. And turning that up, send some of the submix out on the second auxiliary to the internal reverb to add reverb to your kick submix or your tom submix or your hat submix, you know, whichever ones you want. Okay, that's how those sends work. And then finally, on this controls page, we got this panel called effects. Right now, in the stack, the six submixes plus the internal delay and reverb, the whole smash is routed to this final stereo channel. All right, the whole kit arrives here in stereo. And in the inspector column here, we have a copy of that channel in the stack. Okay, that final stack master channel. Here's the copy of it in the inspector column. So we don't need the mixer open. Here's the final channel. The whole kit arrives out in stereo. Okay, now, these effects, smart controls, the control parameters of the effects and EQ strapped across this final output, right? Now, whichever drum machine designer kit you got loaded, you always have a high and low cut filter here. And these two are connected to the EQ strapped over the final channel. Right, there's the EQ. You've got a high cut and a low cut. Okay, and each of these has an on off switch, which is the same as actually turning the EQ band off in the EQ like that. Right? So you've always got a high and low cut here on the left, controlling the EQ on the final channel. And then every drum machine designer kit. On its final channel, it has a stereo delay plug-in strapped across the channel and a stereo reverb plug-in strapped across the channel. All right, so if these get turned up, the whole kit in stereo on the final channel passes through the delay or the reverb. And the kit delay control here turns up the delay. Now that's plug-in off on. And the reverb turns up the reverb. Plug-in off on. Right, so you know that, that adds delay across the whole final stereo mix of the kit, and that adds reverb across the whole final stereo channel for the mix. Right. Now the two smart controls in the middle change with each kit you load because different kits load up different other effects. So currently we've got After Party loaded, and the two center controls are Pulsar, which controls this auto filter strapped across the final channel. Plug in off on, and the ensemble control controls this ensemble plugin strapped over the final channel. Yeah, that's the plugin off on. But these two controls change with different kits. So if I load up um, Deep Tech, now these two center controls change to Rewind and Drive. Drive controls this overdrive strapped across the final channel and this rewind controls this pedal board strapped over the final channel you got this pedal board with a, um, a delay pedal and inside the pedal board the signal is split the clean signal goes to the mixer the delay pedal signal goes to the mixer you can blend in as much of the delay pedal as you want with the clean signal um, so this rewind adds in delay to the clean signal of the stereo kit to get that rewind type reverse effect and that's the plug-in pedal board off on right yeah so you know different kits load up different effects on the output so you get the two center controls here change with each kit but the two on the left are always high and low cut for the EQ and the two on the right are always kit delay and kit reverb there's always a delay and reverb strapped over this final output with each kit all right so that's how all those controls work now it all connects to the stack and everything like that. Now, oh yeah, one last thing. Um, with only these effects controls here, if you right click on one and do open plugin window, it opens the plugin on the final output channel connected to that smart control. So that opens the EQ because the smart control here, this high cut filter is connected to the EQ. This drive control, if I right click and open plugin window, it's going to open the overdrive plugin strapped over the final output, right? So you can do that, open plug-in window, kit delay, etc. Alright. Alright, so that's how that all works. Now, when we select a pad, we're now in pad view. Let's check that out next.